Welcome to the Palmcast with Steve Willis, your independent, unbiased, and unbought source for Ole Miss Athletics. Good morning, good morning, good morning. October 12th, 2020. Hope everybody is doing well. We're coming off of a shootout where Alabama won 63-48. to The most points ever scored on a Nick Saban team, I believe at least an unranked Nick Saban team um, that he's are playing. And it's records for most yards and most points for a non-overtime SEC game. It was probably the most 2020 game that has been produced this season. So we talked about continuity and the disadvantages that Ole Miss has. Um, and, you know, Ole Miss, Arkansas – um, to an extent, LSU, Mizzou, and Mississippi State all have it. The difference is, and we knew this coming into this season, that Matt Corral and that offense are their skill players on the Ole Miss offense. We didn't know Matt Corral was going to be as good as he was, but we knew we could lean on Jerry and Ely and Snoop Connor, and we did so last night for – in the neighborhood of 270 yards rushing. They played a relatively clean game. There was a couple of bad snaps. That will get cleaned up, but there was a couple of bad snaps. Um, Ole Miss ended up with 647 yards, 379 through the air, 268 on the ground, 31 first downs, 4 for 4 on fourth down, 7 for 7 in the red zone. They won the time of possession battle as well. So, what I'm saying is, offensively, they took Alabama to the brink. And with that kind of performance this season, I'm talking about this season, as is with any kind of defensive help, that kind of performance is enough to win eight games. Will they win eight games? I doubt it. But that performance was legit. They are a top five offense in the country. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Anyway, before we get started, let's pay some bills. You can follow us on Twitter at the Stephen Willis and at Old oh, Positively. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash palmcast or join our Facebook group and discuss Ole Miss at Positively Ole Miss. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Positively Ole Miss. Hit the bell for notifications and join us on Twitch at Old Positive or Positively Ole Miss, all one word. If audio is your bag, we're available on most every podcatcher out there. Um, you know, Apple Podcast, Podcast, Google Podcast, um, Spotify, Stitcher, um, TuneIn. Seems like there's something else, too. There's another SoundCloud. And we should be on iHeartRadio and Pandora. We're waiting on the email. I haven't checked on that in about a week. So I probably need to do that just to see where we are when it comes to those apps. But anyway, Ole Miss 63, um, Alabama 63, Ole Miss 48. A, just a gem, possibly the best offensive performance when you consider who they were playing um, and the level of talent on that they were going against. Probably the best offensive performance in school history. Now, I'm not going to count 800 yards against Troy or Presbyterian or whatever that is. That it doesn't matter. That's 647. That was probably the best offense in Ole Miss history. And Luke Logan came up nails on the field goal. Whenever that bad snap happened, that was probably when the game was lost. The only hope we have had was to keep it within one score. Once we kicked that field goal and gave it to Alabama, and they went right down the field um, and went up by two scores, it was over. But we have some defensive problems. We absolutely do. And when I say we, I can say we. You know, I went to Ole Miss, I uh, had an office in the Manning, Manning Center, and I'm on the Letterman's Walk. I can say we, because I've put in the time to say we. 
So now we got to throw that in the trash, which will be easy to do. As you can see, Wayne Kiffin after the game, you know, no moral victories for this program. The object is to win. Let's move on and win the next one. And that's a fantastic mindset. It's going to be pretty easy to put this in the trash. The offense does a similar thing, although it, they will face a different defense this weekend. Barry Odom has done a terrific job at Arkansas, even if the offense at Arkansas is kind of a C-minus version of Ole Miss at this point because they run both – Basically the same stuff. Kendall Bryles is the offensive coordinator at Arkansas. Jeff Levy is the offensive coordinator at Ole Miss. It's both Baylor's system. I mean, Ole Miss has Joe John Finley and um, the offensive line coach as well. Randy something. Um, that's from that Baylor team as well. That's – I mean, it's really easy to see why this offense is clicking the way it is. The pieces were already in place. They looked at it. They said, oh, we can win that. And then it's just the Baylor offense with the Lane Kiffin 10 shot plays. That's what we see every week. This past week, we ran the ball two times to one overthrowing it. And... It was quite effective. It's, like I said, it's the Baylor system. They're going to do what the defense gives them. They're going to do it really fast. But if the defense is playing coverage, which Alabama obviously was based on the first two games, it opens up lanes for the running back. And Snoop Connor really had a coming out party for this game. He had a good game. He really did. And you can see why Jerry Neely and Snoop Connor are going to be featured. Now, they, at Matt Corral, it can be added to that because he's playing like potentially the best quarterback in the SEC. I would say Mac Jones, because, but, you know, he gets dinged a little bit because of who he's playing with. But you can see with the offense, the slot receiver and the tight end are mainly used, just like we um, told you in boot camp the offense way back in March and April. It's the way this offense is drawn up. The outside receivers, they're going to make plays from time to time, but they're going to be big guys and designed to really block. I mean, that's just what they do. All right, segment one of the books, Palmcast. Stick around. Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Hey, this is Stephen Willis from Positively Ole Miss. We're almost done with this break. We'll be back with good information quite soon. The military has been in every generation of my family, and so has VA. It wasn't easy for my dad after Vietnam, but VA helped him and my mom get the home they'd always wanted. My grandpa's been coming to VA since World War II. They even helped him lay to rest one of his battle buddies from Normandy. And me, I followed in their footsteps and served with pride. And now that I'm out of the military, the GI Bill's helping me with school. Every generation of my family has served, and VA has served us all. All right, welcome back to the Palmcast. I am your host, Stephen Willis. Coming off a big win, we're going to transition a little bit to Arkansas and just kind of give you a heads up 
what they've done. Arkansas should be 2-1 and one in the SEC West right now. You need to take that to however you need to. But the SEC actually took a game this weekend away from Arkansas um, by their inept officiating. So do not get overconfident. Do not buy into the media narrative of Arkansas. Don't do that. They're a pretty good team. And they're a C-minus version offensively of us, but they're so much better defensively. So it's going to be top five offense against the defense, and then they're, when they have the ball, it's going to be bad offense versus bad defense. But Kendall Bryles is scheming up plays that are working. They use tempo. I expect it to be really fast. It could be a, you know, a hundred play type of game for the team. Everything is about speed, but you'll see Kendall Bryles and Jeff Levy going at it. It'll mean a lot to them to try and get over on your brother-in-law with Lane Kiffin. The offenses are going to look a little different just because of that um, Lane Kiffin addition to the system. Now, he's helped Kendall Bryles at Arkansas a ton. But you need to, you know, it's going to look a little different on both sides, but it's the both the same system. The Baylor system is, at its core, a run system. Art Bryles came from the wishbone. And then he built this system after going with Mike Leach at Texas A&M. Now, it's kind of interesting that he didn't go air raid after Mike Leach. And then he went to Houston and started playing around, and they built this system slowly over time that is, other than tempo, if it was a regular offense, it would be a pro-style spread. It's zone concepts concepts in the run game. It's um, pro-style pass concepts in the pass game. And Lane Kiffin is going to be all about that. There's stuff that they use. You saw against Kentucky when they scored the final touchdown. That was a USC play. That was a Norm Child play. It was a simple rub route uh, under center, but it's it's there. And it's kind kind of neat to see when you mix that with the Baylor system. The Baylor system, you'll see a lot of um, slot stops, five to eight yards, little hooks, hitches. Um, the screen game, if it's available, um, it's going to go outside in the screen game. You saw that against Kentucky as well. The jet package is a lane addition to this offense, um, but they use it a lot. Um, this past weekend against Alabama, they used it as more of a decoy, the jet sweep, and then ran the flare back a counter off of it. But it's, again, it's trying – to torture linebackers. It's trying to create false steps. It's trying to make a defense read. It's, it's, and you add the tempo element of that where they're going, sometimes snapping the ball with 30 seconds left on the play clock. It doesn't give much time for defenses to diagnose what has happened. Even simple stuff like personnel on the field or formation on the field. It's not giving them much time to process that that information. And then when you add that, they can go really, really fast. Or if the team just goes to a um, comfortable defense, if it's a designed comfortable defense, Lane can slow down the offense, put in one of his shot plays that's designed to attack that defense. It's something else. They're a top five offense in the country. It's, I don't think that's debatable at this point. Everything that you see that you saw at Baylor when they averaged nearly 600 yards a game, you're seeing here. And it's going to be really good because each game they get a little bit better as they should, because 
I mean, we're only in game three of a season where you have no spring practice and no fall camp, and they're already purring at this level. Of course, that comes from the personnel um, where they limited reps to people in fall camp. Once they saw who was their best, they got the reps. They got it over and over again so it could be more well-drilled. So they had that in the tank. When normally you would see a very discombobulated mess of trying to basically share reps. So your starting quarterback is getting 25% of the reps in practice. That's not what happened here. You see that because in the first game of the season, they substituted almost none. But we talked about the 40 hours of film and the personnel decisions um, and everything that are based off that that was lost and why continuity was so important. You're starting to see, see signs, at least on the offensive side of the ball, that they're starting to catch up continuity-wise. Caleb Warren at left guard played a heck of a game. First start against Alabama. I mean, that's fantastic. The offense just played without fear against Alabama. I mean, and that's because the running backs, you know, Snoop Connor and Jaron Ely, between them, have about 30 carries each and about 180, 190 yards over the last two years against Alabama. They don't fear them because they don't have to. This is a really dangerous situation for Nick Saban and is probably, probably nearing the end of Nick Saban. Because if the quarterback has a bad game, you're, you can't rely on your defense anymore to save you. They do a lot of stuff with Steve, Steve Sarkeesian um, scheming you up a lot like Lane. They both have shot plays. I mean, we just have the Baylor system that the offenses are running on. But whenever the shot plays happen, it's the same thing. It's the Norm Chow stuff. It's all about scheming you up. You want a guy that has a better chance to win against the other guy. So we got to make that move happen by getting a predetermined defense on the other side, and we can get there through motion, or we can get there through formation to where Elijah Moore is matched up on a 250-pound linebacker. That's the goal. So – even though it's a game, and we don't claim moral victories because there's no such thing as a moral victory, and Lane Kiffin is saying so in the post game. Now, what I can say is that was the most fun watching an Ole Miss game I've had probably since 2015. A game can be a fun, and you can be upset about a loss at the same time. Those two don't have to live together. It's not a moral victory, but you're not terribly upset. Moral victory is a term that is basically given to people that doesn't understand. They're trying to make a narrative, so they throw that in there. But it's not nobody's claiming moral victory. People understand the program... It's not where it needs to be, and we're growing. People can see that. And when you play number two, both the losses the Ole Miss has had this year has been to the top five teams, or top ten now that Florida um, messed up against a and And they've scored 35 points in every game. You can be satisfied with the offense. We just have to fix the defense. And that's going to be a combination of getting players that are already on the roster eligible that they were counting on, recruiting, transfers, grad transfers, and JUCOs. That's how they're going to put this together. Like Jamon Gordon committing to Ole Miss last week, and they expect, if you look at the crystal ball, um, which is free, by the way. If you want to get a recruiting fix and not pay the nine ninety nine a month, you can hop into the Crystal Ball 
You can hop in the commit list. You can hop in the rankings and you can see all of that without all of the basic editorializing that comes with saying you're going to get everybody and then they go one in 25 over three signing days and everybody's freaking out about recruiting when they just they just didn't know they just guessed they have one source and it is an assistant coach somewhere and apparently that guy thought they were going to get everyone there's nothing to verify that laziness has allowed that to happen and so what we're going to do here as well once we get to video in about five or six months which is coming up we're probably going to buy the equipment sometime in the next month or two um we're going to teach you how to follow Ole Miss and not spend money doing it if you want to recruiting the whole nine yards to where the only thing you're missing out on is opinions from non-fans, self-professed non-fans. So I'll te we'll teach you how to do that. We're going into week three, um, not subscribing to those, and it's going pretty great. If you notice on Twitter, Lane Kiffin only links stuff that is available and free to everybody. He's on the free content train as well. He needs it for recruiting. We intend to um, help him out as well. Like I said, our goal is to grow the fan base. We're going to concentrate in 12 to 30 and help out Ole Miss when we can. Stephen Willis, Palmcast. Stick around. You want to answer that, don't you? I bet it's just killing you seeing the soft glow just inches away. Someone wants to tell you something or ask you something. Oh, come on, answer it already. <laughs> just so we're clear, that wasn't my fault. Next time, ignore your inner voice. Don't text and drive. A message from Florida's trusted choice, independent insurance agents. Hey, this is Stephen Willis. I just want you to stick around a little longer. We're going to get back to the podcast right after these messages. Tonight, nearly 40,000 veterans across the country are homeless. These men and women have pledged to serve our nation, and now we must serve them. Landlords across the country have helped make significant progress in reducing veteran homelessness by making housing available, but there is more that we can do to bring our veterans home. Visit www.va.gov slash homeless to see how you can get involved. And if you are a veteran and you are experiencing homelessness, please call 877-4-AID-VET. Thank you. All right, last segment of the day, Palmcast, Stephen Willis. You can like us and everything on our video sources. You can subscribe, please, to all of our auto, audio sources. Own your podcatcher of choosing. So, that's good to go. Lines released opening for teams this weekend. All the SEC games. Auburn minus two and a half at South Carolina. Um, first impression of this is... I'm almost willing to take South Carolina at this point outright. Auburn should be one and two. They're two and one, but they should be one and two. Um, with a game that Kentucky gave away at the end. So they were they are oh so close to 0 and three. Going at to South Carolina and giving away two and a half points. I'm almost willing to money line take South Carolina in that one. Um, Kentucky at Tennessee. Tennessee minus six and a half. The Wildcats going to Rocky Top. The win again over Mississippi State this weekend. They beat them 24-2. to was oh so important because they were staring at a potential for 0-5. Now, if they can get Tennessee or they can get the next game, all of a sudden 2-3 and three is manageable. It's not a disaster season, which is really close to being. They lose the next two. They're 1-4. and four. And they start like the Vandy portion of their schedule 
where they're going to win some games, but they might have already dug themselves too big of a hole. LSU at Florida. Both teams lost this weekend. Florida favored by 10.5 points. LSU right now is the worst team in the SEC West. I would not predict them to win a game in the SEC West at this point. They are somewhere hovering around 12th or 13th in the league. The only team below them is Vandy because they're Vandy. But in this one, now I'm tempted to just pound Florida on this one. Ole Miss favored by three and a half over Arkansas at Arkansas. Fayetteville has been a house of horrors for Ole Miss. Um, keep that in mind when doing this, but this line is going to go up all week. So if you want to bet um, Ole Miss and think Ole Miss is going to win, the longer you wait, the more points are going to be given up on the bet. So just keep that in mind. Texas A&M minus six at Mississippi State. Um, yeah, um, this looks like free money um, at the time being until it gets voted up. Texas A&M is a zone defensive team and a man defensive league. Teams have rushed three and dropped eight against Mississippi State back-to-back -back weeks and have given up 14 points, including Kentucky with six interceptions this weekend, won 24-2. A&M is better than um, Kentucky on offense, I think. I, I, I just don't know. I just That just looks like free money to me. Vanderbilt at Missouri. Missouri favored by 17 and a half. I imagine they're going to celebrate a little bit um, over the win over the LSU Tigers. But 17 and a half is a lot of points, but I'm tempted to lay them. And finally, Georgia at Alabama. Alabama is favored by six and a half points. Um... Two teams that, you know, they're kind of mirror images of each other's promo. Georgia is Alabama from 2014. Alabama really struggles against spread offenses. I expect them to spread it out and do that to Georgia's defense because Georgia is the only good defense in the league at this point. Or maybe great defense is the right word. Maybe not Maybe not only, the only good defense. And Alabama just is going to spread you out, scheme you up, and try and th find things to do. Georgia against Alabama's defense, I don't know if they can win a shootout. And Alabama is going to score this game. This isn't a situation where Kirby's defense can um, keep it at 16, 17 points. No, there's going to be scoring in this game, and I'm not sure that Georgia's offense can keep up. I know, I know. Looking at Alabama giving up, you know, over 600 yards and 48 points against Ole Miss, but that's a situation where Ole Miss looks better. The Alabama is going to get better just by focusing on Georgia because Georgia is going to try and pro style them. And that could be a problem. I think we could see JT Daniels. I know we've said that every week this year. We just keep waiting on Stetson Bennett to fail. Um, but I'm expecting the former number one player in the country to make a play for the job instead of the under six, six foot Stetson Bennett. Alabama, by the way, is very well drilled um, at defensive linemen getting their hands up normally. Freddie Roach, they struggled with that this year. And Caleb Warren, you know, props to him. He just completely played a great game um, for his first start at left guard. So, and that proved to be a difference in the run game. So, that is lines from this week. I expect Ole Miss, um... Ole Miss, Texas A&M, and potentially Florida to go up. I expect South Carolinas to go down. Tennessee, Missouri, Alabama, they all kind of look right at the moment. 
So have a good one, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Palmcast. I am Stephen Willis. See you tomorrow.